Hello and welcome to the final episode of the day, not of ever, obviously, just of the day for the um, Father and Son Pastime Podcast. I'm Patrick. I'm Kevin. How are you? That's my dad. Dad, eight episodes in, we're not that loopy. <laughs> we got we got a little dive in the middle. We got a little loopy there, and then uh, we're okay. I think loopy comes around number thirty-five. <laughs> we're not ever going to hit thirty-five episodes in one day, or you mean thirty-five no, 30, free yeah, agents? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. We might. We have forty free agents to go over now. Uh, the back half, the eleventh through number fifty. There'll be some honorable mentions in there. There'll be the last six. Um, we've. We didn't agree on anything of the first 10 dad for the first time ever doing this. Uh, we ended on Wilson Contreras. We're going to pick up at number 11. Again, we're using the MLB uh, free, uh, trade rumors, free agent um, picks of 2022, that they're top 50. Um, that's how we got this list going. Number 11 dad is Kodai Senga, one of two people that are being posted from the Japanese league. I know he's a starter, starting pitcher dad. Tell me more about him. Great ERA. Um in kind of like in his later 20s, I believe, prime picking for uh, Major League Baseball to pick him up. Um, reliable starter, uh, like you just mentioned, 1.89 ERA in the Japanese League last year. Uh, wants to come to America. I haven't gone to a club that signed a Japanese star last year that's just nuts about you know being in that city. He'll be their best recruiter. He goes to the Cubs. We have finally one in common. Yay! Da, 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 da. Uh, I like how it was the University of Maryland fight song there. Um, <laughs> I have five years, $20 million a year. Um, all reports say he's kind of like a U Darvish, not like maybe the front end talent in Japan, but probably like a two or three guy mm -hmm. um, in America. Um, but yeah, good for us. Thinking yeah. Chicago, yeah. that I thought the same thing was was Seiya. Yeah, and you know Suzuki would have had a phenomenal year. He'd been in the Rookie of the Year, um, you know, finals, uh, but he got hurt a good bit of the year. But when he did play, he was one of the you know better players on the Cubs really I think turned around um, the outfield um, he's gonna be long term with the Cubs I just think it makes total sense Cubs need pitching in the worst way I just have them going and maybe being a two or three starter with the Cubs they need pitching yes they do they should be linked to every pitcher on the market to be honest they that's really what, should be that's what I have the next if, 50 is yeah. all Cubs. if they don't call an agent of a starting pitcher they didn't do their job right now they're active right now that one um no, I mean, they could honestly use the first. Never mind. They're going to need a first baseman. Another c category of the Cubs that they need is a first baseman. Um, the Cubs are on my possibility list for Josh Bell, although I don't have him going there. Um, I have Josh Bell getting a relatively cheap but good offer, four years, $15 million a year. Um, just that second half of San Diego really hurt him. Yeah. I had this guy crossed out four or five different times that I landed with Minnesota. Interesting. Yeah. So That'd be a good fit for him. The th there's really three options I considered uh, highly. Cubs were four. Um, but San Francisco, San Diego, and Minnesota. Um, I think highly one of those three teams. There's a lot of stuff I read that they don't want a reunion in San Diego, so I'm listening to that. Mm -hmm. I thought it might be too much money for San Francisco to land him with getting Judge. Again, a dominoes falling. Um, but Carlos Correa needs someone to throw to in Minnesota. And Josh Bell has... A Miguel Sano vibe, but better offensively and defensively. I had him going to the Giants. Um, you know what's what's funny about Josh? Even when he was with the Pirates, you know he's he up and down. You know, so Correa and Bell are teammates, no matter what for us. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Love it. Um, but I mean, he has great power, switch hitter. Um, you know, things you're looking for for first baseman, he, he checks all those boxes, but he, again, just not steady. Um, I think he might be a 20, 25-round homer guy and all that, but being at the Giants and that short porch in right field might be an enhancer for his power outlets. Um, I think that, you know, hitting the McCovey Cove would be great for another big man at first base like McCovey was. So I, that's why I have him going to San Francisco. Okay. Um, you had him going to... Minnesota. Mini. So okay. Correa and Bell are locked in together. We love that. Yes. Dad, you struggled with, all right, what are the, where are the shortstops going? Like this team or that team, they can easily go there. That's how I felt about these next three pitchers. Uh -huh. I, know, I know Ben Attendee's in this list, yeah. but Chris Bassett, Jameson Tyone, and Tyone Walker, 
I, I don't give a shit. Like, I mean, it's the, it's the true, honest answer is, okay, who doesn't need a number three starter? Yeah. Um, Check off everybody. So everyone's going to be linked to them. Um, I, I think everyone's going to be calling them, so these are very hard to predict. I think they're all going to get, like, three-year contracts. I think they'll be around, you know, the mid-teens, 15, 16, 17 a year. Um, I'm just going to go Bassett, Tyone, Walker, and then we can talk about them sure. as, like, a threesome, if that sure. makes any sense. Chris Bassett going back to the Mets. He just wanted a longer contract, three years, hmm. eighteen million. Jamison Tyone goes to Minnesota. Hmm. They need pitching. I know I have a lot of Minnesota early, but then it, it does drop off. Um, I don't know the last next time I had Minnesota to be honest. Um, and then Tyone Walker goes to the Cubbies. Interesting. So where are you on those three? Ah, I got the Bassett going to the Rangers. Cool with you. All right. I have Jamison going to the Orioles. Okay. And I have Walker going to the Padres. Okay, so you're saying that there's a trade looming in San Diego then if they they sign a pitcher. Because they have kind of five starters, especially with re-signing Nick Martinez. Correct. But there's a trade. That or, you know, you never can have enough pitching. I'm just wondering... Last year, you got some uh, folks that you know are getting on in years and all that stuff. Do they fortify their starting pitchers to make sure they have enough pitching going forward? And he's a West Coast guy. Okay. And again, I mean, I don't think these three pitchers are so unique. I agree. That I agree. They're they're and they're the, if you top took like the top fifty, there's so many three, four, five starters that you can't spread them out. But again, it's going to be personal preference and getting the most money they can. But the Orioles definitely need some kind of leadership on that staff. And then Jamison is one of those guys that is on the younger side that probably fits in better with the Orioles than the others. Bassett's got a little age on him. I think the Orioles will be linked to all these people. I agree. I just know that the Orioles have said that they would like a a lefty starter. And all these guys throw right, which is kind of how I grouped them together. Mm -hmm. Um, We'll go one more. And then we'll come back to Ben Attendi. That's where I have Sean Manaya going to. I have him going to Baltimore. I have him going to Cubs because Cubs need left-hander starters Who in doesn't? the worst way. Who doesn't? So you have him going to Baltimore? I have him going to Baltimore. And so Bassett Mets, and you had Bassett Texas. Right. Tyone Twins, Tyone Orioles. Walker, San Diego, Walker, Cubbies, Manaya, Orioles, Cubbies. Right. Sean's from Indiana. Yeah. So. So is Mancini. That means he's going to end up in Chicago. <laughs> okay. Um, let's talk about Andrew Benintendi, Dad. Sure. Where is the left field lefty going? Red Sox. Yeah! <laughs> A reunion! <laughs> Never. You got so excited about a union. He belongs in Boston, for he God's does. sake. He does. He really does. He does. Left-handed, you know, great outfielder. You kind of like, you know, see them come together in center field, doing their little congratulations after they win a game. I miss that more than I can say. I just think he's perfect, and I think, you know, the Red Sox need some kind of spirit and excitement this offseason. Bring him back in a hurry. Yes. I'm having Verdugo move to right field for what it's worth. Yeah. Um, however, my center fielder will not be Kike Hernandez. He's coming into second. Trevor Story's going to short since they don't get any of those uh, shortstops. They lose Xander, and a new name comes to center field in Boston. <laughs> coming, coming to This again, pipe dreams. Okay. All right. So we have two in common, Dad. It's funny that they're both our teams. Um, Benintendi. Three years, $15 million, although I think you could pay him more. He's mm-hmm. very consistent. So we're at number 18, Andrew Heaney, uh, another uh, starter, kind of a back-end guy. Had a good year in L.A. Where do you have him? Twins. Okay, I love that. Um, I had him going to the White Sox. Okay. And um, they both need pitching. Yeah. Again, this is kind of the run-of-the-mill. I never know what to do with starters or relievers in these top 50 free agents. It's like, yeah, 1 to 12 people will get them. No shit. Um, so, yeah, either one there. Is there a particular reason you thought Minnesota, other than you need pitching? Left-handed pitching. So Orioles it could be there, too. Okay. Yeah, and I think, you know, they're, you know, left-handed starters are a few and far between, 
And, you know, if you think about Drew Smiley um, with the Cubs this year, a very mediocre pitcher, but had a great year that will be in demand this offseason just because he got so many innings, he's left-handed, yep. had a winning record, he'll get a two- or three-year contract. Yep. I, I think he deserves two years, $50 million. Yeah. That Jose Abreu, obviously you hinted at a Notre Dame boy coming to Chicago. I have him going cross town. I have Isaiah Abreu being a cubby. Me too. So you got both. Okay. I didn't say which team in Chicago. Oh, I just said Chicago. Okay. Abreu to the Cubs. It seems a lot of people are linked there. The that, White would be Sox. Their, that would be their first signing, by the way. Does it? Is it motivated at all by the steal across town? Yes. We just got your <laughs> Cuban. Okay. Yeah. Um, Cigars? No, I didn't mean it like <laughs> offensively. It was like we just got your the. It was a prize Star. pick out of Cuba. Yes. that was yours for over a decade, and we just got your man. Correct, uh-huh. and he'll do exceedingly well in rugby field, just because when the wind blows out, you know he may have forty home runs a year next year. But don't forget, the Cubs have some young players coming up. If they give him a one or two year deal, that lets some of the players develop. Two. Yeah, I got two for his day. Yeah, I think it's a perfect fit, and he doesn't have to move. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he could also end up DH in form, too. Oh, yeah. You know, because they should have plenty of phone calls, including some from Boston. Um, and the Cubs need a DH in North way. Yeah. And a first baseman. I would like to find a match where it's not Cubs and Red Sox, but I'm glad we're matching at those. <laughs> Mitch Hanniger, Dad. I haven't stayed in Seattle. I ha- So, obviously, I've, I have wrote this list down a couple weeks ago, and then with the trade um, of Teoscar, I think he's out. So I can I fully believe that, and then they... So they would put Mitch Hanniger as like a DH, possibly? Okay. Yeah. A little depth. Um, I think he likes being in Seattle. Uh, sure. I think that he's he could look at Seattle, but he also could look at somewhere to maybe even solidify even more of a winner. Um, and he becomes a right fielder for the New York Mets. Interesting. Um, Marte goes to center. And obviously, huh. they have Nimmo going to L.A. So there's a need for a right fielder because center field has a pretty thin market this okay. offseason. So okay. Mitch Hanniger... And I think he can hit 35, 40 home runs in New York. I think he can really star um, and be almost like a cheap version of Aaron Judge. I know that's relative because millions of dollars is millions of dollars, but I have four years at 15 a year versus yeah. 50 million for Judge. He so. was he was always a golden boy of their uh, minor league system. I remember. And So uh, was Jared Kalanick and Kyle Lewis, but, you know. There you go. But, yeah, that's why I thought the Mariners would try to keep him in, in, in the family. Thor, I feel a little slighted at number 21, but this is obviously a— you know, 2022 Noah Syndergaard. Um, where's he going, Dad? Guess I have him going to Blue Jays. They're my second pick as yeah. a reunion is uh, there. Yeah. He started his career there, right? And he came to the Mets and then yeah. to Philly or went to I Angels. just think that he would be a great addition, probably a one-year deal. Um, you know, see how it goes and everything. But that would give some leadership to that Blue Jays at the fourth, fifth starter. And, again, a team that's rising. He kind of fits in just for a lot of reasons, and he can play for a winner. I think Noah gets a lot of one-year contract offers. Um, I don't think he takes them because he's just did that in L.A. He got traded midseason. Yeah. And I think the team that should get him is the team that he ended his season with, Philadelphia. Um, he The fans got into him. They were wearing these store outfits. It kind of makes sense to me. Um, there's a lot of long-haired people like Alec Bohm on that team. <laughs> that he Walsh. Kinda, yeah, I mean, he kind of um, – Marsh, you mean? You said Walsh. I, oh, yeah, yeah, I meant Samar. I'm um, sorry. I like, anyways, I just think he kind of blends in with that team, um, and he does become their number three starter, or four, depending how you look at Ranger Suarez. Uh, but, yeah, I think, obviously, I did not have a, a big-name shortstop going to Philadelphia, so after they kind of lost the shortstop sweepstakes, they got to get some big-name pitcher, and it's Noah Syndergaard. He's a, big, he's a bigger name. Um, then Bassett or Tyone or Walker, even though maybe the talent isn't as there as much more. But is he, is he a five inning pitcher, or can he you know stretch out a little he's, bit more? He's five or six. The, he's five or six. Yeah, because in the playoffs they were yanking him after three. Remember? It's the playoffs. I think it's a little different. But okay. I want to say he threw like a hundred and fifty innings this year, which is pretty good considering his background. Yeah, you know. Let me check that. Um, Who do you have? You have Toronto. That's right. Yes. The next one is Anthony Rizzo. He's obviously signed in New York. So I have him going to the Yankees. You're funny. It does not count. He's <laughs> owner of honorable mentions. Um, yeah. Syndergaard dad threw 134 innings. I said 150. It's pretty close. It's um, not bad considering. I'm going to do the math. That you're talking he started probably 25 games? Exactly. Exactly yeah. 25. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
which is so not he's bad. throwing five and a, five and a third. Um, maybe Philly can get that up to six, and then boom. Dad Nate Ivaldi. I am staying with the Red Sox. So do I. <laughs> Why is this Cubs in the Boston thing? We just know those teams, I guess. Yes. We're hopeful. Watch none of them end up with anybody. <laughs> um, no, I think he. I think. You know, you you kind of like make sure that the Red Sox might be a little frugal and all that stuff. They got to look in the mirror this offseason and say, how yeah. can we get back to the promised land? And they need to spend some money. I mean, I don't have them. I don't. I don't have them spending more than fifteen million dollars on any one player. At all like Eovaldi has just a long contract. Benintendi just has a longer contract. They, you know, they're getting their average annual values in the you know teens. But they're just not going to be linked to anyone that's looking for twenty more million or more. You know, I just think, look at JD. JD's looking for that, and they're not even no, Boston's not even linked to JD anymore. I know. Like, what happened? Um, he's coming up. He's in a couple. Uh, but I think Boston or St. Louis are the only two teams that I really see competing for Nate Eovaldi. Um, and then that's kind of with uh, okay, is Jay Flaherty not great? And I think Boston has a clear need in their starters. For Nathan Eovaldi, and I think they'll make a they'll make a better offer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, once was the 2018, you know, World Series, and he he never has been that good since. Yeah. Um, but Boston will pay him the much still based off that incredible uh, playoff performance. Yeah, he was good. Dad Taylor Rogers, um, the highest ranked reliever on here. Yeah. Yeah. Who needs more relief help than the Red Sox? But, uh, the Yankees. I'm going to Red Sox. Oh, <laughs> uh, fun! I have someone else going. I have a reliever going there. Okay. Um, the reliever that's going to Boston, I think it's paid a little bit more than Rogers, um, and is overall a little bit better. Just Taylor Rogers is ranked higher. Mm-hmm. I have him going to the Yankees. Sort hmm. of staying in that um, mistake. Hey, we don't we don't want to get this big name. We don't want Kenley Jansen. We we spent a lot of money on Rawls Chapman. We don't want these big names, closers. Uh, we don't want these players with a big personality. I don't know shit about Taylor Rogers. I don't know if he has a personality. He sounds like a Yankee already. Um, <laughs> so they can clearly strong think, second half this year, right? Um, they can clearly figure out um, how to put him in their back end, and they need a lot of help. Efros is out for the year, and they lost so. I mean, no more Britain, oh, no yeah. more Chapman, no more Chad Green. So they need a lot of help too. Um, so Verlander and Taylor Rogers are their two big additions. Um, why Boston does, um, I'm just going to leak a pick a little early, um, Nate Eovaldi and Kenley Jansen. I know I'm jumping around here. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we get to Kenley, I have just Kenley making a little bit more money per year than Taylor Rogers. And you got him going to Red Sox, right? I have Boston with Kenley Jansen, yeah. Okay. Who do you have? I have the Rangers. Yeah, they're on my list. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, yeah. they got um, Barlow down there. It's just that I don't know if he is the best. He could be an eighth inning guy. Well, and he clearly would move over yeah. to Kenley Jansen. I just think the Rangers, San Francisco, are in the same, you know, thinking and philosophy that hey, we need to make some moves. Yeah, we need to make a move because of the you know the for you know ticket sales and everything else. We need to improve, and the only way you improve is get better players. JD Martinez, Dad. I know we're bouncing around a little bit. Number it, twenty-five on the list. Guardians. Yes. Yes! Yes, Dad! Thank you for seeing that. They need a DH in the worst way. I, I know that you could argue they need catching. I, I don't. I, we're not going to see eye-to-eye on, on Wilson Contreras, but I'm glad we see a true DH is needed in a competitive team no more than the Cleveland. And a leadership bat. and everything else? A veteran in a the A veteran clubhouse? bat that can hit 20 home runs, 80 RBIs, that can, if he has a resurgence and he hits 330 like he used to do with Detroit, fantastic. Yeah. Um, yes! But J.D. Martinez makes so much sense in Cleveland. They can finally spend a little bit of money. Yeah. Um, I think that's like their only signing I have for them. But that's that's enough in that division. We're up to like five similars. Exactly five. Christian Vasquez, do you want to make it six? Let's go for it. Boston? Cardinals. Damn it! <laughs> that makes sense, though, because you... D- yes. You Cardinals need a catcher. And he's, I, in my opinion, he's the best defensive catcher available. Beck's a mix of both. I think there's obviously okay. better defensive catchers than Christian Vasquez, but they don't have any offensive. Like Austin Hedges is probably a better defensive catcher than Christian Vasquez, mm. but all Hedges can't hit. I mean, I looked up some stats, and he really 
he threw out a high percentage of base runners. Oh, I'm sure. And you had him yeah. the Red Sox? Yeah, I have a reunion. Re- yeah, a little bit of reunion. Um, he, he has never, I know this, I am 30 years old, so I look at the social media input. I talked about Aaron Judge not like following the Yankees anymore. Vasquez, despite winning a World Series, has not changed his profile picture of him in a Red Sox uniform. Hmm. So I think there's some love there. Um, I hope it's reciprocated, obviously, if he does not. They drafted him, correct? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, he's, he's been a Red Sox his whole life up until this year. So he was pissed off that he got traded. Uh, no, he wasn't. I mean, I, I think every player is a little sad that they have to leave. He was also traded from locker room to locker room. Yeah. I mean, he literally had to walk across. That had to be, That's tough. Yeah. Um, but he got to be a little bit of a hero. Um, you know, in there, he was found in Puerto Rico by the Red Sox um, Academy. Um, the Puerto Rican Baseball Academy, that sounds like a, a Red Sox thing. Mm-hmm. Um, he's always known as Mini Yachty, which is funny that he could obviously go to St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I don't know. I just think he'll he'll be a Sox. I mean, his first World Series was like his second year as a Red Sox. Um, he had one home run for, for Houston. That's funny. Yeah. Um, any team would be lucky to get Christian Vasquez. This is me just being a little biased and saying, God, I hope we get him. Well, being a mini yachty. I know. You know? I just think Wilson Contreras is offensively superior, and that's what really was needed in the playoffs. And I, I think they've had a defensive catcher for, what, 15, 20 years with Yachty? Mm-hmm. I mean, Yachty can hit, but not really. Correct. Um, he, he was uh, he was a pitching specialist that right. controlled the defensive game. Right. And if Yachty grounded into 40 double plays in a season, people went, that's okay, buddy. And then run first base. Right, exactly. I think they were, they're going to switch it up at least for the next couple of years until they can find maybe a, poor, a Puerto Rican catcher, a Dominican catcher, um, that can be another Yachty for their team. Um, but Wilson Contreras is, I think, a better stopgap than Christian Vasquez. I also think... I think they're about the same age. I imagine. I yeah. also... I just think that... If St. Louis was penny-pinching, I understand, but I think St. Louis has the money to spend oh, yeah. on Wilson. Oh, yeah. It'll be interesting to see. I, I'm glad one of those two wound up in St. Louis. Uh, I talked about Kenley. You said Texas. I said Boston. We've accepted Kershaw's a Dodger. That doesn't count. I am going to Dodgers. Okay. Rafael Montero has signed with Houston. I am going to Houston. <laughs> None of these count. Um, Dad, the next one that ta- counts is Jose Quintana. Um, unique pick here. Uh, yeah. Openly unique. Who do you have? Phillies. Whoa, so being a contender. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He stays on the East Coast, you know? I mean, he has had such an up-and-down career. How many I'm, teams has he played for at this point? At least five. I'm going six. Okay. I think it's five because it was White Sox, Cubs, St. Louis, then Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, and then he finished up in St. Louis. Correct. We're gonna find out. Yeah, but I just think Phillies need a left-handed. Uh... Oh no 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 no! <laughs> Shit, we're White Sox, Cubs, Angels. Oh yeah, that's right. Because San Francisco Giants, yeah. Pittsburgh, St. Louis. It was six. Okay. I don't yeah. remember him at all. I think he went to the Angels. Because of Madden, and Madden used to thought he was the greatest thing in the world, and he just wanted to play for Madden because he liked them and everything. But the Phillies need a left-handed starter. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just checking something. Um, oh, it'd be bats left. Um, I could see him in Philly. I have um, Quintana kind of doing the same thing he did this year, signing for. A good amount of money to a, a team that either isn't contending that will use him as trade bait or will use him for a multiple year deal and a cheap contract to so, sort of develop youth around him. I have him going to the Detroit Tigers. Hmm. They have a lot of talent on that team, school ball and turn ball, that kind of need a mentor. That's kind of why they got Erod last offseason. Okay. And I think he's going to, he's kind of along that talent line for Ed, Eduardo Rodriguez for me. Um, maybe Erod's just a little bit better. Um, but Erod and Quintana, and then your rookie pitchers that can kind of develop around him. Uh, Casey um, Mize can listen to him in the dugout while he's recovering from Tommy John, that kind of stuff. Okay. It makes sense. It doesn't, but that's okay. No, I, I like I like the, the thinking. Speaking of Philly, Dad, Zach Eflin, the starter, closer, reliever, who knows what role he's going to get into, so all 30 teams could go after this guy. What do you think? Cubs. 
Okay. As what role? Reliever. Okay. And the Cubs yeah. have a, like a just a philosophy of they get these guys that can you know go either way, and then all of a sudden if they need somebody to go from bullpen to starter, they you know get them four or five innings and all that stuff. This guy has some potential. He did a second half. He did really well the Phillies out of the bullpen. I think the Cubs need at least five pitchers in the bullpen. He's one of them, and I think he they could ob- obtain him pretty quickly. I think Zach Eflin will be like a steal from some team, and I've already chosen a team as... Some might say that Dansby Swanson got snaked, and Zach Eflin is also going to get snaked by the D-backs. Uh, you know what? Then I'm done. I need, I need a snare drum. You know, I need something. I have no idea. It's He's probably going to be the hardest name to predict on here. Honestly, he's affordable by every team, and he could be any... He could be a long reliever. He could be a long... Um, a fourth, fifth inning back end starter, and he has some experience closing. So, like, we're going to find out. Are you talking about Carlos? No, I'm talking about Zach Eflin. Okay. Zach Eflin had all throughout the year uh, with Philadelphia. He start, He had games started. Yeah. He had games finished. Right. Um, but so, he was effective more out of the bullpen than a starter. Oh, I agree. But yeah. people are saying Seth Lugo is could be a, a starter. And where did that come from? Yeah. So I'm just saying that if, you know, if a team is set on their rotation, they're only looking at him as a reliever, or they're only looking at Carlos Estevez, for example, as relievers. But once a player says, well, I could be any role you want me to be, all 30 teams are calling. And that's what makes it super hard to predict, because why yeah, couldn't know. the Rays get him? Yeah. Why couldn't the Rays get him? Like, Whoever has exactly. the best opportunity and money. Right. Um, Carlos Estevez, dad, unlike Eflin, Estevez is a reliever, but pretty decent Especially for your favorite team. <laughs> Let's get him out of Colorado. Who do you have him going to? Cubs. I have him second to the Cubs. I have Baltimore first. Interesting. Um, the good fit there. I think both great fits. Um, yeah. I think every reliever you're just going to say Chicago from here on out. <laughs> no, um, I'm not. Hey, you're going to get some right. I, I know mean, that. that's not a bad strategy for, you know. Well, a, I mean, their bullpen was bet. decimated with the trades last year. I don't know anyone in their bullpen, Dad. Um, I could probably name four or five, but they're but all that's a super AAA fan. guys. That's a, you're a super fan, right? And they're, but they're AAA guys. They got forced into action just because they had no one else. I have Wick and a Hughes, but I don't know his first name. Brandon. Brandon Hughes, but I, I, out of Michigan list. State, he was an outfielder for Michigan State. That makes sense. Came to uh, the go cup. be a reliever, <laughs> Mr. Outfielder, left-handed thrower. You know, but he was probably the most effective reliever they had. A former outfielder. That's, That's so how bad sad. it was. That, I'm, hey. hey, our best reliever is actually an outfielder. Yeah. Now stay with me. Yeah. Um, if the Cubs get in a pinch, he plays center field. Estevez and Eflin, I don't think, get that much. They should deserve more. Jerickson Profar, I think he's finally solidified himself as a left fielder, no longer this like super util guy. Played all left field last year for San Diego. And was had a decent year. I see a lot of people calling him. But I see him being used as another like trade deadline chip. Okay. I have him being the one signing the Washington Nationals get and putting him in left field. Wow. I think it's crazy. I'm probably not going to get it right. But they still need some names to be. They're trying to sell their team. They got to have some names. It's kind of like the DJ Justice of the 2002 Moneyball. Hey, hey, we're getting Jerson Profar, former number one prospect in the world. And they can sell that. They can say that to season ticket holders. They can have a jersey. Does he get on base? He does get on base. <laughs> um, and that could keep them in the media other than just like, are the Nationals selling their team? It's like, oh, the, uh, the Nationals have, you know, it's just something interesting. It's just Some something. Tickets. Correct. Yeah. It's, They're doing something to prove the team. Yeah. And he, again, is a good enough guy where he could give some direction to the infielders like C.J. Abrams. Again, former teammate C.J. Abrams. Um the uh, I'm blank on the the superstars uh, outfield name that was like the centerpiece of that trade. Uh, you're uh, ba- uh, no, oh, and horrible. Uh, we we said it before. He um, Richard. Just look up the trade out to tell you. Robert Hassel. Hassett. Robert Hassett. Hassel. Hassel. Um, and then yeah. So I just think there's some, and then Mackenzie Gore. And so Kirk, I think yeah, the Padres former uh-huh, Padres could could do a little uh-huh, teammate again. With you, good thinking. Who do you have? Mariners. So, um, futility. And utility. if you really think about it, they lose Adam Frazier. So that might be a good replacement for Frazier. But he's not a second baseman anymore. Utility. Okay. And hey, it's a bat. Yeah. 
All right, next three have signed Jock Peterson, Giants, Perez, Texas, Tyler Anderson, Angels. Yep. I just went all three so you didn't have to say I called it. Just want to knock all three out. Um, Brandon Drury, Dad, second baseman, third baseman. Third baseman for the Cubs. <laughs> bye bye, Patrick Wisdom. I have him on my list. I think Wisdom gets uh, cut along the way. I have, I'm sure he does. I have Drury playing second base for the Philadelphia Phillies. Wow, that's I, a good thinking. Stott, they lose out on all shortstops. Stott stays at shortstop. They need a second baseman to replace Segura. Wow. They get power. That's the theme of their team. Hey, let's hit long balls, and who cares about defense and speed? Kind of Brandon Drury's thing. Great thinking. Two years, 12 million a year, Brandon Drury finally gets paid. I think that's really good thinking. Perfect fit, second base. That You know, you just need to make the routine play. You know, I'm, I'm with you. That's great. Because with Cincinnati, he was having a great year. Yeah. So, good thinking. All right. Ross like Stripling, Dad? Orioles. All right. I have him in the AL East, too. Um, I have him being the lo- the lone signing of a dysfunctional Tampa Bay team. Interesting. Yeah. I, I think that. he's, like, played for, like, all the NL East teams. Or AL East teams. Yeah, a lot, a lot with the Blue Jays. Yeah. Dad, Andrew Chafin, I think we're on page with this one. I got him Red Sox. Whoa. Cubs. Yeah. Well, look, I got Cardinals, Cubs, Red Sox. I just think a left-handed reliever would be with the— uh, He'll get a lot of calls. He will. And he's he's flaky enough to really fit in with old Boston and that dugout. Mm-hmm. Um, he likes but, chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> I would love, in my lifetime, if John Lackey becomes a Boston Red Sox pitching coach, I'm out. Like— I think that's just so funny. He's up in the Hall of Fame voting this year. Oh, he, Lackey. He, he might get a couple. I mean, his Angels years were phenomenal. I know. Um, he's but he's not a Hall of Famer. Correct. Correct. He might end up But a character. Ballot. Yeah. Big old boy. Yeah. Hey, Papelbon got votes, you know? Yeah. I like Pat for what it's worth. He's just a psycho. <laughs> um, no, he is. Like, I love him. Like, he, he, he's, he's great. That's who I would want closing the ninth inning. Just yeah. a crazy guy. That was a fun team back then. Dad, I don't... Th- I think I have any major signings by the White Sox yet outside Andrew Heaney, which is not a big splash, but I have them replacing their second baseman with Juan Segura. Interesting. I think Juan Segura and Tim Anderson are a really fun up-the-middle combo. Who do you have? I got Mariners. Oh, they're on my list. Yeah. Kind of, again, who is going to be Adam Frazier? Yep. Um, Adam Frazier is an honorable, honorable mention, so we will get to that. Okay. So obviously you're not choosing Adam Frazier for the Mariners. Correct. Dad, I think this was a disrespectful listing to Michael Waka at 41. A phenomenal year in Boston. Yeah. Where's he go? Orioles. That'd be great. If the, if you have a lot of starters going to the Orioles, I love that. I have one thing that um, Toronto has seemed to do is really pay attention to Boston pitching, and they're going to get Waka, and they're really going to solidify a fun, fantastic. He becomes their fourth starter. So you Manoa, Gossman, Barrios. Blue Jays. And Michael Walker. Well, and then some kid, number five. You know what? That's you know another great signing for the Blue Jays. They make sneaky moves in the offseason. Yes. And come spring training, you're like, damn, that's a, that's a nice little uh, little squad they got coming up. Yeah. I think I think Waka becomes a very quick signing. Yeah. Um, okay. I think the, the big signs will start as soon as the, the calendar uh, turns, to be quite honest. Mm-hmm. David Robertson, Dad? Mets. As a setup guy yes. to Edwin Diaz. Yes. Okay. They wanted him in the worst way during the trade deadline. Didn't happen. Mets will make that happen this year because they're losing a few relievers. Yes, they have. Uh, they pretty much lost everyone but Diaz. Well, yeah. They resigned him. So. Yeah. I have the Dodgers for Robertson. Um, something they don't, like Kenley's available, but they're not going to resign him. They've moved on from him. Uh, the Craig Kimbrell thing was an experiment gone wrong. They kind of have a lot of good bullpen pieces, just not a ninth inning guy. And I think David Robertson can be that guy. Yeah. I mean, he's I mean he's going to be 38 next mm-hmm. year, but he's reliable. Yeah. Except when he jumps out of the ball, uh, the uh, dugout and pulls a, a leg muscle. But other than that, I mean, mm-hmm. you're talking, you know, great yeah. track record. He wants to be on a competitive winning team. And so he, that's a smaller market or smaller he, group of teams. And he's, he's had New York experience with the Yankees. He's used to that environment, so he could do well. This next pick, I think, makes the most sense of my latter half. Okay. Michael Brantley to the Padres. Interesting. So they need a hitter that can play left field, 
Michael Brantley needs one year of rebuilding his value. He'll be a free agent probably hopefully next season, and he can get like the last couple years of his, his career under that underway. But Michael Brantley, when healthy, can hit 330. No one really on the team can hit 330. Yeah. Um, that could be, you know, maybe a one or a two hole hitter. Um, and I just think he's affordable uh, for the Padres that I know are going to probably do crazy moves with their GM and all that stuff, but that just makes so much sense. A one year, $50 million deal. Prison. Brantley, Grisham, and Soto all in the outfield. That's a pretty good outfield. Yeah. Yeah. Who do you have? I got Blue Jays. Blue Jays need a left fielder because they were after Hap for the longest time. He could take the place of uh, recruiting Hap. So Lord Escurriel moves to right. Who's the other outfielders? Whit Merrifield, George Springer. I think so. Okay. Yeah. And Merrifield becomes utility. Utility. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. they were after- So that's who they traded Tiasco for. Okay. They, that's what you're saying. They traded. A 35 home run hitter, Teoscar Hernandez, for Michael Brantley, Michael Brantley. I think they did. I think that would be a big loss to the, to the thing. Okay. Maybe the money was for Noah Syndergaard then or something like that. Um, okay, I think that would be a very interesting move for Toronto to move Lourdes Gurriel to right or and sign put, another left fielder. Maybe put Brantley in right. No, mm. Not enough arm? No, he's older. Okay. All right, we'll see where that happens. That I, I think that's one of your lower likely picks, but okay. how well do I know? I got five right last year. <laughs> that Michael Conforto is really the reason you lost last year because if he had signed, we would have tied. Yeah, but he never signed. Uh, so and then he got hurt. Yeah, what a dum dum. Um, where's he go? Rays for a one year deal. The Rays that's need that. need some players. He Rays might be one of the few teams that give them a deal coming off a, a non existent twenty twenty two. I can see that. Um, I think he gets the one-year contract as well from Texas. Interesting. Um, I think Texas loves taking that chance on him. Uh, he goes to right. Garcia goes to center. Um, and, and there's your kind of lineup in, in Texas. Uh, I think he could totally outperform um, his $10 million value um, and really uh, help a Texas team um, get more wins. Yeah. Adam Ottavino, Dad, is next. Phillies. I can see that. I have Because they're losing Roberts, and he takes Roberts in place. I have him staying in New York with the Mets. Interesting. What a he bad... Did, ex- he did have a good year, you know? Real good year. Really so. bad experiment with Boston. Uh, Chris Martin, Dad? Mets. Cubs. <laughs> Just a revolving door. Um... I don't know if we need to keep talking about these relievers. They can go anywhere. Okay. Uh, Justin Turner, Dad. Staying in L.A. So do I. Yay! Yes. I don't know why I highlight. I just realized I highlighted Michael Waka, and we had did not have that same opinion. We have Turner in common, and nobody else, at least on this page. The last one in common was J.D. Martinez, right? Yeah. Okay, wow. And you got real excited about that. I did. Yeah, we've had, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, okay, cool. All right, so uh, Turner in L.A. just makes sense, Dad. Yeah. One year or so contract, be the third baseman. Yeah, it might be his last. It might be his last year. All right. I hope they get reunions with both Turners and Kershaw. That would be good for L.A. Kluber, Dad. Red Sox. I can see that. I can see that. Um, <laughs> I can see them taking a chance on that. I have him in Arizona. You like the D-backs. I like a little bit of the D-backs on my mind. Um, but it's also just taken, you know, he's the fourth, fifth starter down there. Um, low risk, very similar to what happened in Tampa Bay. Just, hey, man, why don't you be next to um, Madison Bumgarner and two former, what, Cy Youngs mm-hmm. are playing. I think I think they both had Cy Youngs. Yeah. Um, he's an American League guy, though. Right, but that doesn't mean he can't go west and play in a uh, dome. I know, I know. I'm, I'm just saying. You know, I kind of think of all these little angles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike Clevenger, Dad. Angels. I have Baltimore. Um, wow. You had a lot of Baltimore earlier, so that makes sense. It's not on your list. You though. know he's a, he's a rehab. Uh, yeah. Okay. I know. That's exactly why Baltimore can take a chance on him. Okay. Um, Angels, I think their rotation's set. That's my only thing there. But, again, you're looking at this guy as 
kind of like a James Paxton. Like, we'll offer you a contract, probably two years. Correct. Cheap value. Hope right. you can build you up and then get you for a second year. Okay. I, I mean, I think Baltimore could do that. It's probably not going to happen, but I wanted to throw out some Baltimore um, starter. Um, it could be Michael Waka. It could be uh, this next guy, Drew Rosinski. Rakinski. Right. He's been playing in Korea. Correct. Right. He was in the States, played for the Cubs, went there, had very good success over in that league over in Asia. I have my Arizona. I got the oh, D-backs. Cleaver, Drew. I have Cardinals. Yeah. But, yeah, he... Uh, He's probably 32 now, something of that nature. So he would be a one-year deal. Um, St. Louis loves old pitchers. John Lester, Adam Wainwright. Yeah, they did well with those. Yeah. Okay, so that's the MLB uh, Trade Rumors top um, 50. And our honorable mentions to add to replace those six that have signed already Mm -hmm. was Cody Bellinger, Trey Mancini, Kevin Kiermeyer. Adam Frazier, Will Myers, and Chad Cool. Yep. For what it's worth, I gave my dad nine options. He chose those six. The other three that I'm just going to say live on air, Gary Sanchez, I have to Tampa Bay to replace Mike Zanino. Brandon Belt, I also have to Tampa Bay to be like a first baseman after Choi is gone. And the uh, Japanese sensation Masataka Yoshida, a left fielder, goes to New York, the Yankees, um, to replace sort of Ben Attendee. Borderline huh. Hicks, borderline Judge. Like I said, a lot of risk in New York going on this offseason that yeah. once Judge does not get chosen. So those were my three. Obviously, none of those count, Dad. Uh, who do you want to start with out of those honorable men? Belly. Members? Cody Bellinger, center fielder for the Boston Red Sox. Center fielder, San Francisco Giants. <laughs> so what about Yaz? Oh, he's better than Yaz. Yaz go- Gas can play any three outfield positions. In fact, he was a left fielder for the when he was in the Orioles system. So you have Peterson in left, Yaz in right, Belly in center. Yes. Like pretty much a Dodgers. Yes. Off, okay? Yes. And then and what happens to Lamont Wade? DH? Yes. You know, he went to Maryland. I know that, Dad. Um, and don't forget, Belly can play a little first base. What a, You have Nemo as well. So I don't understand this anymore. Well... I want him to go to Giants and piss off the Dodgers. So I think I probably so, did okay. him before I did I don't understand. Out. Well, by God, it's going to be a hell of a team. <laughs> so, and someone's getting traded, so that all to work out. Okay. okay. Well, I am suddenly pro my opinion. Um, ben Attendi, Belly, um, Verdugo. He is would be field. fantastic in Boston. I, I, you know? Boston also is going to give him the one-year contract to run him out because Duran's not clicking. Like, the outfield's just not clicking. Is it Duran Duran? No, it's Jaron Duran. He's stupid. Um, no more Frenchy Cordero in the outfield either. Um, Kike at second, Trevor Story at short. Uh, you, are you okay with yourself? <laughs> Raphael Devers at third, Tristan Casas at first. Uh, Dahlbeck is traded, Vasquez behind the plate. I like the lineup all of a sudden. Trey Mancini died. Where's he going? White Sox. I figured you were going to say that. I have him, hilariously, even though we just talked about this team, going to San Francisco. Um, like I said, I didn't okay. know who to put at first base. It was between him and Bell, but they're going to put more money into Judge um, and other players that they can easily get uh, Trey Mancini playing first base out there. Okay. And maybe it's a great fit as well. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Kiermaier. Dad. Cubs. I have Cubs as well. Yay! That makes sense. A person I hate going to a team <laughs> that I don't like. <laughs> Um, no, the Cubs are just fine. They're lovable losers. Uh, Morel shifts to where? <laughs> you talking about Morel? No, Christopher Morel. Oh, he also can play third base. And well, you have someone going to third base. He can He's... play um, any outfield position, any infield position. What outfield position? You just covered it up with Kevin Kiermaier. It goes Hat Kiermaier Suzuki, right? Third base. No, you've signed somebody to third base, Dad. Drury, but he can move around. Did you sign Drury? Yes. Where the hell's Brandon Drury on my page? You did it. So he's going to play third base. Yes. But he's going to move around. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. And, you know, Kermit might be a defensive replacement at this point. Oh, my goodness. I have Adam Frazier staying with Seattle. They're giving him another chance. Interesting. I have him going to Phillies. 
I'm surprised it's not Chicago at this point. Uh, he count someone go back and count how many Cubs he's chosen because he's just playing the numbers game. Some will end up being Cubs, not all twelve. <laughs> um, I love it. Uh, yeah. All right. Moving on. Um, will Myers, Dad, Kansas City, playing what position? First, Vinny Pasquantino. <laughs> You just wanted me to say that again. Um, right field would be the only option. He can um, he can play right field. He can also DH. He played a lot of right field in um, in San Diego this year. I have him going to Miami Ooh, um, to play Miami. right field because yeah. they really don't have a set outfield situation. It's very okay. in flux. Jorge Soler is their DH, um, and if they if he had to, Garrett Cooper could move off first. Maybe as a trade chip, and Will Myers can go back to first base. Okay. Chad Cool, my last pick, Dad, ends up in Boston. Oh, I had him in Baltimore. Okay. He will be a great pick. I love I love Chad Cool. I think he's a very underrated. Yeah. Um, he was he was very good with Pittsburgh. He just didn't get a whole lot yeah. of run support. Well, he was great with the Rockies this year, too. Yeah. Could yeah. have been traded, but the in, Rockies suck. In Colorado. Dad, I had zero Rockies, as you know. Um, I had zero Oakland Athletics. Yeah, I didn't have any you know. Oakland A's. Why would you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I had, I think everyone, probably every other team had somebody. I don't think I had any Kansas City players. I had one. I think everyone else had some representation. I think so, too. Yeah! Um, Excuse me. Bless you. Dad, we finished our top 50 free agents. We ended up with one, two, three, four, five. No, that didn't count. Six. Seven in common. That's very good. Five out of those seven are, are Cubs or, or Red, Red Sox. Sox. So we're all excited for J.D. Martinez to go to Cleveland and Justin Turner to go to the Dodgers. Very chalk picks on those two, too. Yeah. That was cool. We went through that quicker than any other year. Yeah, 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, so all in all, we spent about an hour 15 on 50 free agents. Yeah, that's. I think that's a record, to tell you the truth. I'm excited for the slow part of um, the offseason to be over. Big reason why we did this was just to get through November because nothing really ever happened in November. Excited for the winter meetings, some trades. I actually love being wrong, Dad, and seeing, like, you know, maybe not the J.D. Martinez, but, like... Surprise picks. Yeah, right, the train Rancini to Tampa Bay, and you're like, what? Yeah. Why? why? Um, or people move their whole infield around for a player that's going to play short when he's never played short before. Yeah. Trey Turner suddenly playing second base. Like, that stuff really interests me. Um, that and the trades. We shall see what happens. Uh, thank you for staying with us all day. If you watch every single episode, we love you. We love our fans, subscribers. If you're not subscribed, hit that bell icon. Hit that subscribe bo- button. Follow us on all social medias, yeah. at Pastime Podcast underscore on Twitter and Instagram. And we are the Father and Son Pastime Podcast on Facebook. I would love to have people's reaction to the shortstops and where they're going to go in the in the roulette of Rutanda. Yeah, I just think that we kind of gave one example, but there's millions. That's I think the key to the free agent signings this year is where the shortstops land, and then everything spins from that. And judge. Feel free to go back to our top ten video. Give us feedback on that. I think those names will obviously be the more watched videos. Um, Dad, out of your 50, how much do you realistically expect to get? 10. I'm going 7. I don't know if that means he wins, but again, he picked the Cubs for everybody. Um, So that could be effective. It could not be. Um, You having fun? Um, They just had the money. They had the money to to spend. Last year, I did not go gaga on the Cubs because I knew... But then they spent some money. A little. Suzuki, Stroman. Yeah. Yeah. They, They were still like 120 million payroll. I know. Um, they'll balloon up this year. Excited to see the splashes. Excited to see the mystery picks, like the twins with Correa. Um, so maybe my mystery pick this year is Dansby to the Diamondbacks. Uh, excited to see Vaughn Grissom play shortstop for Atlanta, because that seems to be the option. Um, or, will they have Arcia there still? Um, but the Braves always have so many in the minors. I know. Well, we shall see, but it doesn't look like there's a reunion there. Just excited to see... How the chips fall, and on opening day 2023, how right or wrong we were, $50 is in the line, folks. And, and I'm planning on being at a baseball game on opening day. I hope you have uh, room in your schedule to do that. Uh, but I think 
we used to go every opening day. We kind of like haven't for a few years, but I want to get back in that routine. Let's make it happen, Captain. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, we don't know when our next video will be. I'm sure it'll be a draft of some kind where I will win. Uh, or a baseball story. <laughs> Good luck getting through the off season. Enjoy the World Cup for if you're just a sports fan in general. Um, we got to go see how the U.S. is doing, Dad. Captain Kevin, signing off. <laughs>